Значит, мы начнем с Рахили Гейбулаевой из Бакинского университета. И я сразу оглашу порядок. Тот, в принципе, порядок, который у нас был вчера, тот же формат действует и сегодня. Значит, на выступление выделяется 10 минут. Ну, плюс-минус, я думаю, можно. Единственное, мы, в общем-то, должны, конечно, стараться укладываться, и нам наш технический ассистент будет, соответственно, предупреждать о, об окончании за две минуты. Далее следуют вопросы. В течение пяти минут мы можем с вами обсудить тему. Если вдруг останутся вопросы, то, как вчера, мы можем эти вопросы оставить на окончание нашего заседания и их какие-то ваши комментарии, замечания, пожелания, конечно, выслушаем. Так, значит, презентации все знаете, как показывать. Вот одна презентация у нас будет технический ассистент, ее показывает. Так, я думаю, что мы можем, наверное, начинать. Рахиля, Рахиля мы начинаем с вас. Я так понимаю, доклад у вас будет на русском. Да, да, я, если позволите, учитывая контингент, но слайды я пыталась с утра делать на английском, я не знаю, вот что. Так, скажите, дорогие участники, все ли будут понимать э, слайды на английском? Нет, нет, у меня есть и русский, и английский, а выступать я буду на русском, чтобы избежать. Ага. Я думаю, в такой степени те, кто в переводе работают, они английский поймут. Нет, выступление да. будет на русском. На русском, все, очень хорошо. Тогда мы, с вашего позволения, можем предоставить Рахиле слово. И следующий, Георгий Тимуразович, будет ваша очередь. Можно начинать. Да, могу начать, да, Деля Рахану? Алло. Да, не... конечно, предоставляем вам слово, пожалуйста. Спасибо большое. Я представляю Бакинский славянский университет. Я обычно занимаюсь проблемами антропологии, в частности, визуальной и литературной, корпоративистики и семиотики, и немножко когнитивной лингвистики. До этого у меня была возможность предоставить на ваших конференциях два варианта из этой теории, которые вот видите вы на экране. То, что вы видите, я не буду, наверное, все повторять. Один из них, это одно, одно из выступлений было посвящено, как слог может иметь на переводе, на примере слова «намаз». А другой доклад у меня был на примере слова «вайн», «вино», как согласная буква может быть носителем значения. Сегодня я хочу представить вашему вниманию, как перевести, например, слово, как концептуализируется слово на примере слова «китаб». И в какой-то степени моя, моя теория она идет в унисон с презентацией на мастер-классе сегодня доктора Давида Синглтона. Семиосфера, как ученые бывшего Советского Союза, и, думаю, не только знакомы с термином семиосферы Лотмана, а также, как лингвисты, наверное, это знакомы с терминами deep structure и surface structure на Чомского там, или Хомского по-разному. И главным методом у нас является вот эти две методологические принципы, два методологических принципа. Здесь на экране вы видите две версии. Первая версия, вот на одной линии это представлена синхронизация современной интерпретации. Китаб, переводим книга Бог. Если пойти дальше, допустим, в эпоху Средневековья, Китаб можно было перевести как Намя, если дальше Хамса, Хамса, Хамушан, Хамиш Меглиот, а еще дальше Кетубин Пенту, а еще параллель Панча Тантра, извините, Панча Тантра, и там же это в Индии можно еще найти Панча Маведа. Еще у нас два, две рукописи. Китаб, который, этот эпос, который известен как Китаб и Дадагоргут, на этом листе так и написано Китаб, время записи 15 век, а также Китаб Кетубим, это уже более известная вещь, конечно, это Кетубим, как третья часть еврейской Библии, которую читал первой частью христианской Библии. Синхронизация на одном этапе, синхронизация на предыдущем историческом этапе, вот, которые вместе составляют семиосферу. А где же тут заключается инструкция? Мы попытаемся это найти. Вот здесь уже данные цитата от Хомского. Вариант 
Просто хочу вам напомнить, как через согласный можно восстановить первичную, первичный смысл. Первичный тоже, конечно, в кавычках, потому что нет, вот нельзя вот говорить, что это вот совершенно первично. Это условно протозначение. Вот на слове слово пардеш, которое ну, ни о чем вроде не говорит широкой аудитории, а здесь есть более известное для англоязычной, европейской аудитории слово парадайс, для тюркоязычных стран парадай, для европейской мир, мир для русского, русской аудитории, русскоязычный мир, мир – это мираж, а для исламской культуры – мираж. Это все здесь можно найти через… Я буду вкратце, если будут вопросы, потом я с удовольствием хотела бы с вами дискутировать. Это все вокруг буквы «Р». Буква «Р» просто вкратце. Если вникнуть в историю реформ алфавита, то консонантный это алфавит, по-другому научный термин называется алфавит, он базируется на финитийском алфавите, который стал после Третьей династии египетской основываться на буквах современном понимании, и вот эти буквы были согласны. На этой основе потом образуется еврейский алфавит, арабский, и все остальные алфавиты уже воспроизведены от этого. Это вот вкратце, если вам будет интересно, потом можно будет говорить. Но значение каждой буквы я здесь отметила. Дальше. Просто вот показать, как согласны вместе, это уже более такой другой уровень, который можно по-другому назвать слоговым. Правда, здесь гласного нет, он подразумевается. И вот как согласные могут менять. Но deep structure, как структура памяти сохраняется, РТБ, кто знаком с семитскими языками, тюркскими языками, вообще это с языками региона, включая там абхазские, шумерские, это античные языки, это региональная там не говорят, вот первичный тот, первичный, это просто региональный. Вот консонант, РТБ, МЕРТБ, МЮМЕ, если в начале, это означает отношение. Если вы помните, здесь я приводила пример, МИРРОР где-то был у меня, вот здесь, МЕ, МЮ, МЮ, это тоже оттуда, от шумерского, которые проникли потом в европейские языки. Это означает отношение к чему-то. Вот в данном слове МЕРТБ то же самое, РТБ это этаж, РТБ это вот, ну, позиция, а потом можно сравнить с английским словом rate, rating, это все имеет, в deep structure имеет один и тот, одно и то же значение. Или DRS, вот здесь есть примеры, опять-таки с мы префиксом мы. И, наконец, то, что мы хотим сегодня более подробно становиться, это КТБ, как обжат кластер, обжат кластер, то есть согласный кластер. Тут уже имеют разные значения. Это на современном этапе китаб как книга, бук. На иврите есть еще кетуба, это брачный договор. Кятыб тот, кто пишет, записывает не писатель, в смысле райтер, а вот кто именно записывает. Мячтуб это лето, если помню. Коэлю, там у него так и это слово как раз таки не переведено. Мактуб – это то, что написано на лбу. Вот кетубим – это называется это третья часть в тонах. И обжат ячейка узнаваемая для вот, людей региона, носителей языка. Не надо тут быть каким-то сверхъестественным ученым для носителей. Как вот в случае Давида Синглтона, нашего сегодняшнего Презентера, который представил велские и ирландские варианты при английском языке. Вот это вот, опять-таки, регион определяет. Да? Почему, например, слово «китаб» не перевести? Помните, я здесь показывала уже, что есть на другом этапе «китаб» как на «мэ». Нет, но мы переводим именно… А, это, но мы переводим не как да, на «мэ», а как книга переводится и как буква. Вот современный академический перевод. Хотя нами есть a modern academic translation. Uh, Почему мы привели опять Кетубим? Потому что там имеет значение, кто... On the slide I mentioned the word Кетубим again. Там он называется Озан, это очень важно. И еще он не саги, но саги, но саги, вы знаете, сага о форсайтах, но более глубже исламские саги. Там э, э, старшая Эдда, младшая Эдда, они называются саги. Саги – это... Кстати, есть еще в Куране, который в, это, в джанате называется это Бог, который он саги. Ну, в общем, это тоже вкратце. 
meaning Antarctic language it means to address someone or to appeal on the one hand it means to address someone on the other hand, on the other hand, this word uh, is used in the depiction of Asia. Sometimes it can also be uh, used to make the other here are the conclusions of my presentation. I would like uh, to refer to the idea of Lotman once again. When we uh, transfer an information uh, without, uh, without, without translating, there are no questions for now. We'll probably speak about it a bit later because the reconstruction of a similar sphere uh, is of huge interest, especially in historical presentation. Translation crossroads of different cultures, not only language, but cultures as well. I'll give the floor to the Georgi, Mr. Georgi Hukuni. We uh, will speak about about the translations of the Bible, and he will speak about his theme. It is rather interesting. So I give you the floor. So can I start the presentation? Yes, please. Uh, do you see the presentation? Uh, yes, we see it. So, colleagues, uh, so our so our theme is uh, connected with the biblical um, uh, theme and it is devoted to the post-classical versions of the Bible and how the modernism and traditionalism oppose. I would start uh, with uh, that uh, we can see uh, some paradox of secularism. So on the uh, on the one hand we speak about securing that is going on, but on the other hand, uh, last witnesses uh, last decades witness um, a lot of translation of into different languages and uh, in Russian too. Uh, firstly, when we speak about traditional uh, traditions, we should remember about the national which are the base for the some nation, for some nations. And here uh, we will speak about uh, Bible, uh, Luther Bible, uh, King James Bible. And uh, recently they were, uh, there is uh, the 
on the uh, translations, and the only translation was Synodal uh, Bible. Uh, then there was a uh, uh, Bible of uh, Elizabeth. We cannot speak that it is national, but uh, it has a special status and it is it plays a, uh, a great role in our, in our culture. Now we will speak about uh, the modern translation. So here are two directions of development. Uh, all of them they, uh, have their tendencies. Uh, on the one hand, it is a uh, national uh, translation. Translations and some people say that uh, while editing, they uh, preserve the origin, but on the other hand, they edit them uh, to make them more modern. But on the other hand, uh, new translations are uh, are appearing and they oppose the national uh, If we speak about editing, so here we should preserve uh, the origin because if we change it, uh, there will be uh, a paradox of the same. Uh, so, to say, um, it was uh, the ship of the say, and they changed uh, it, but and uh, finally it was a new ship. So it is not uh, very simple. So there are new versions. So we we'll start with the new uh, popular uh, version, New King James Version, a revised authorized version. So we see that on the one hand, it is a great Bible. Then uh, on the other hand, we should change it. So here we see what uh, was made in the lexical and stylistical um, sphere. And even uh, authors um, say that it is uh, a conservative approach. Uh, some uh, conservative uh, researchers say uh, that it is not uh, good. And they say that it is uh, a failure. And they ask uh, to whom this Bible uh, belongs. Uh, the next Bible, it is uh, the first in meaning for Europe. It is uh, Luther. Bible. It is called uh, 217 because it was uh, edited many times, and the last uh, great edit was in 1974 and 1984, and it, and it was discussed. So then they edited it again, and that's why it is named so. And the author said that they uh, tried to preserve the Luther language. But on the other hand, uh, uh, using uh, some new uh, sources, uh, they changed uh, the words and phrases. So they use Geschlecht, uh, Fraga, uh, inclusive language. So they change some words, for example, brothers and sisters. Uh, of uh, only um, brothers. So they tried to make Bible the more woman-like uh, because um, 
but they um, left uh, the word by the hand in the Bible. So now we speak about modern versions of the Bible. Uh, there are about 300 uh, English versions. So you know the principles. But there is uh, one main principle. Uh, the right of philological translation is not right. And uh, the right one is uh, one in our society. So we see inclusive uh, language, uh, we see uh, feminatives, so we should say that even in Russia there are uh, about uh, eight translations of the Bible. Uh, some of them, for example, Kuznetsov version, uh, which were uh, discussed in society. So this uh, te te tendency to feminize the Bible uh, not by, by saying in the Russian Bible. So the next point uh, is connected with the previous uh, speaker. So modernization, um, I think uh, it is very interesting that in the biblical books, uh, they, they preserve modern uh, measures. For example, they used meters. And for example, they say that uh, the sons, uh, the David's sons, uh, hair should uh, weigh uh, two kilograms. Um, I don't think, uh, think that David knew about kilograms. So two minutes left. Uh, I also think that it is a uh, very interesting uh, moment is uh, adaptation, but there was, um, so they tried to uh, make, to adaptate this uh, book to the uh, Islamic world. Uh, there was an American version, but it was prepared in Kazakhstan. So the Russian uh, scripture uh, is the main version, and there was uh, the version for Tajikistan. Uh, the, the names was and the third version was changed rather, uh, was named rather stranger uh, the conservative version in the synodal uh, translation as we know uh, we call um, uh, the cut they call we call him the cut and in Islamic version, we call him uh, in other way. Uh, it is not suitable uh, One more uh, important point, uh, point is simplifying of the language. In Kuznetsov version, uh, the language is not uh, simplified but even more for example so this phrase uh, uh, this phrase is uh, not uh, distinct it is uh, clear but it is rather uh, difficult to understand So this 
beginning of the Bible is uh, written by different authors, but uh, the aim is uh, one, a single. Uh, so there are discussions about the uh, who are the authors, but uh, the words of the card should be uh, referred as if uh, the of uh, the authors of the text uh, spoke the global language of the modern time as. So in the uh, beginning of the 19th century, uh, people said that tr translation performed uh, by the modern language. Uh, I can say that it is uh, it is not. So in conclusion, we can say that the main strategy version is the following. Uh, of the uh, reference, so here in, in new uh, phrases, we can say that the origin text is not important for the translation, and it is important what uh, the reader is expecting. And some um, summing up, uh, I can say that it is good uh, to use modern language, but I will pro propose um, the quote of uh, Mr. Brusov. Uh, the translation uh, for the immediate reader will be old uh, in 20 years. And if we will use spoken language, uh, it will be insuitable uh, in several years. So it is a work for only short time. When we speak about the I think it is important on this uh, opinion. So thank you for your attention. I hope that uh, if that. So thank you, uh, Mr. Georgi Huhuni, for for your report. Any questions? There are no questions still. Uh, uh, thank you for your interesting report. So I have a question. Uh, recently, I have read an interesting book um, named, named uh, Retailing Culture. So, so the authors of this book uh, study different texts and they study how uh, different uh, epics are changed and they uh, study different texts, uh, for example, of Robin Good and they define several types of the stories, um, including stylization. Uh, it is what you have said. Uh, so, as I have understood, uh, now the main uh, direction is to the modernization. It's, so we try not to uh, so we try to uh, make the text more understandable for the reader in uh, the terms of language. Uh, yes, it's right. We try to make the text more uh, political correct. And how do how do the translators uh, comment on the text that uh, the text is opposed uh, to the modern tendencies? So in the 16th, they say that we should take into account what was uh, understood by the origin of uh, readers, and we should try to have the same way with us. Uh, so 
here we can't be um, objective. Some translators think that it is the main thing to to think about what the reader is uh, waiting, and then uh, the client uh, who was glad. So are there any versions of the Bible that you study and that are not the Bible, but uh, some, some way of retelling? Uh, yes, there are some uh, communist Bibles. Uh, there is a great tradition. Uh, the first experience was in the end of the 19th century. Uh, there was a communi communist ideology. Uh, they changed the prayers. But I haven't mentioned it because I studied and my uh, co-author um, studied the text which connected to the uh, Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hohoni. Should I stop the demonstration? Yes. Uh, so let's move on to the next um, speaker. Uh, to we are moving on to um, translation of fiction of literary texts. Um, it is about dialogue of British and American cultures. So you, you see the note we will be analyzing. Uh, the next um, speaker will be uh, Miss Eugenia. So you could do in a large several those years. Oh, dear colleagues, you hear me very well, yeah? Uh, hello, dear colleagues, dear participants. Um, I would like to uh, say that uh, this is our joint research with my master student, Olga Silva. And here are the results of our work. This research is about literary text in terms of social language, linguistics and intercultural communications. Um, there are national experience in a very scientific language and the translation make cultural and pragmatic adaptation of the text while translating from one language to another. And so we can say that this is an intervariable translation. This is the term in English. This uh, phenomenon is examined uh, on the example of Harry Potter novels. So J.K. Rowling uh, from the English, very, from the British, uh, very different English to the American one. Um, it was made by the editors of Scholastic Press, a uh, press house of the USA. So there are some examples um, of intervertical translation. Uh, on the screen, you can see Wellington Boots. Uh, it is about uh, British culture. Um, uh, and in America, it is rubber boots. Uh, tea, it is not only a drink, but also a meal. Uh, so it is meal. And uh, jelly was substituted by gel O. And this uh, term is capitalized. It is a commercial brand. Uh, trainers were substituted for sneakers. The sweet shop was um, substituted by candy shop and cinema by movies. So, um, look at uh, the cover of the books of the first novel. So, the um, name, the title was changed in September. So, in the USA, we see the source of the show. So uh, we found some 300 intervertical matches on these books. Uh, this uh, process, uh, these substitutions are called translation very conditionally because traditionally 
uh, translation, it is uh, transforming the text from one language into another, and there is a secondary text created afterwards. If we adapt a text to another variant of translation, uh, is uh, an act of uh, intercultural communication. It is not translation in full sense. There is no secondary text created, so, but the main feature is the meta language. Act. When we read the original text, British novels, the uh, translator um, defines what Alexis will be um, misunderstood by the recipient and substitutes them by common or by the dialect words of the variant. So uh, we decided to call this translation as uh, interval. There were some precedents uh, in um, translation theory history. Uh, the uh, translation of Harry Potter books um, is not uh, the first translation in history. There was an example of, um, uh, of Charles Dickens' uh, novel Martin Chazowit. Uh, um, there were some uh, extracts um, which were not included into the American version because uh, they uh, despised the Americans. And some children books uh, also uh, translated in that way. Uh, Jane Whitehead uh, found it in her research in 1996. You see, you can see in the slide uh, the title of her. She says that there are a lot of alterations uh, in general literature. They include names, some conclusions, uh, some orthography, punctuation, and some uh, phraseologisms. So let's uh, see what the reasons for the second decided that it is um, possible. These reasons are lexical and uh, sometimes grammatical, but research we studied less changes. The first one is the existence of translator false friends in American British variant of English. You can see the examples in the slide. Just in sweater in the British and in America and in dress. It was actually by sweater. Chips is uh, fried potato in British and chips in America. So it was substituted for fried. And pants, which also has different meanings, were substituted by common underpants. A second reason is uh, national territorial madness of lexical unit. It can be um, substituted by an American word and by common word as well. And the third one is allusion to some reality of British culture. So Christmas um, in the original novel was substituted by Santa Claus. Uh, there, there are examples uh, of the editor himself when he put these books to American audience. He gave an interview and he says that he wasn't trying to Americanize the books, but to translate them. He insists on the term translation. Uh, he said uh, we changed the book so that an American kid reading the book would have the same literary experience that a British kid would have. And there is an in, in, in how this intervarietal translation influences the perception of the text by an American uh, recipient, how it is different from the perception of a British recipient. Uh, let's look at the work by Philip Mapple. Uh, at his essay, he elaborates on uh, consequences. Uh, he says that it is um, necessary to um, 
necessary to preserve uh, British words because they created an image of Great Britain of the end of the 20th and, uh, century. And this uh, image was perceived by millions of readers all over the world. And they uh, decided that it was a um, mirror of the situation in, of the, in the country of, deep, of some period of its history. And uh, it's the importance of these books increases the role of details which were inserted into the American variant. Uh, we can't but agree if we um, substitute British speech by variants, the um, realistic image of the novel uh, is lost, the national uh, also lost, uh, readers are imposed with the um, idea of amplification of cultures. Uh, American journalist Peter Greek says um, in his article, Harry Potter minus a certain flavor, that by protecting our children from an occasional misunderstanding of a trip to the dictionary, we are pretending that other cultures are would be the same as ours. By insisting that everything be Americanized, we dump down our rather than enrich it. In this win, Philip now says that knowing different words um, which define the same object will be the result of American as reading the British version. Uh, it, it might be small, but uh, it, it would be uh, very important to understand the language. Uh, national and cultural differences amplifies knowledge of the reader about the world. The idea of intervarietal translation of novels uh, is sometimes insulting for those uh, who um, are of the culture of the original. It is like ne negligence of the self-identification and of the uh, idiosyncrasy. Uh, there are some uh, other consequences it is the destruction of some uh, illusions, uh, po poetic um, versions. So, packet of crisps is a bag, a bag of crisps. Uh, so, there is no opportunity to see the phonetic um, method. And lumpy jumper destroys the rhythm. It is lumpy sweater in American. Um, version. There is no poetic effect in the word done, uh, but cockerel is a bookish word. And alliteration, scattering bushes and boards, telephone boxes and trees is substituted by scattering bushes and waste baskets, telephone booths and trees. And uh, some um, jokes are also for example, spell tape, it's a language play. Um, it is based on using uh, the word sanity and the spell. Um, and in American uh, version, there is scotch tape, and this language game play is lost, or which wizard is in a interesting occasionalism of the British version, and it is lost in the American variant. It is security men instead. And um, the uh, perversion of the uh, speech portrait of the characters, we uh, can see some things uh, that um, we testify dialectal differences. They are lost in the American word. A speech of one of the characters um, reflects his eye roots. 
see it. It's, it's about this family, and there is the word man. It's uh, the um, consequence of identification. And in the American version, it is mom, it is American word, and uh, um, where, where differences are lost. So what are the consequences? Uh, Simon of my research. So if there is some intervarietal interlanguage translation uh, uh, amplifies the definition of translation. Uh, translation is traditionally translation from one language into another. But if we assess this uh, translation on in uh, lingual cultural terms, uh, we should acknowledge that this translation simplifies the text, perverts it, perverts the image It leads to some losses, loss of jokes, losses of some stylistic um, methods of expression. And, uh, it loses a certain flavor um, by the author. And uh, our final conclusion is as follows. Comparison of uh, these versions is very interesting for a researcher. It has a uh, practical nature. Like these uh, conclusions can be used um, when we prepare a theoretical uh, courses, uh, courses on uh, tactics and theory of translation and uh, culturology and uh, regional uh, courses. And this um, uh, research can be also um, used when we create dictionaries uh, of American and British English. And this um, the difficult uh, these conclusions can be used to verify some national territorial um, mentions in the dictionaries of the English language. So, dear colleagues, thank you for your attention very much. Thank you, uh, Ms. Lartseva. It was an interesting report. So, you made a with the minuses and pluses of intermarital translation. Are there any questions, dear colleagues, uh, to Ms. Lutzer, please? Uh, please tell me. Uh, yes, everybody uh, put off the mic. And in terms of intermarital translation, the definition of the right one. There is one language, but there are some uh, stylistic. Yeah, thank you for your question. Um, there is uh, no um, stable term for this type of translation. And in our research, these terms, synonyms, translation, interlanguage translation are synonyms. Uh, we substitute them one with another. Why is this question? Is, uh, because some books uh, in German. So thank you, thank you. It is. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes, please. I wanted to ask how um, does the author comment this variant of translation treat this adaptation? Thank you for your question. It is very curious because uh, John Rowling is the witness of these changes. Um, we uh, have saw some interviews 
and delusions in the articles to Rowling's uh, interviews. So uh, Rowling was relying to accept the change of the title of the novel and she regretted it that she accepted uh, in uh, other uh, variants uh, Rowling prohibited uh, these changes of lingua cultural nature because they destroy her message so these changes are um, here on ten first books, yes, uh, uh, more for the first books of the series. Thank you, thank you, it was very interesting. Thank you. I guess that we should, if you have questions, you can ask uh, when we have time. And now uh, the next. Now we're going to have a report on occasionalism in a literary text. Uh, after this report, I'll ask uh, Ms. Shibana to present her report. And I pass the floor to Yevgenia Abayeva. Thank you very much. First of all, uh, the previous speaker for a very for presenting a very interesting book. I try to find it and start. And I hope the example uh, you brought up in your presentation can be used in lectures. Thank you very much. It is always very relevant as it is fresh information. It allows us to modify our uh, lecture and workshop material, making it more interesting and up to date. Uh, do you see my presentation? Yes, I see it. Thank you. Today, I would like uh, to talk about syntactic compounds as occasionalisms in a literary text. We understand that there are uh, various uh, challenges facing uh, an interpreter, such as Latinus and occasionalisms. They are often uh, targets of research. Uh, we observe new uh, trends uh, in uh, correct fiction and in translating it. Uh, here you see a reference to Harry Potter. Uh, one of the issues are um, syntactic occasionalisms. Uh, this type of word formation uh, arose a long time ago. Uh, many of them have become an integral part of language, and it's usually not difficult to translate them, such as the word mother to be, uh, meaning a pregnant woman. When translating it, you can use both uh, ordinary words and euphemisms. But when uh, these words are uh, the so-called open energies, it's more difficult to translate them. Here is the material of my study. Uh, it is a um, novel by Mackenzie Cadden, Head Sleeper, which was published in 2017 and translated in 2019. Uh, there are a lot of syntactic occasionalism in this. I'm not uh, going to tell you about the methods of the study. I'll just mention uh, once again uh, that English language is a productive language from the point of view of world formation, and there are more and more syntactic occasional especially uh, in informative text and in fiction. We analyzed syntactic occasionalisms. Uh, uh, such uh, uh, lexis is defined by um, individual style. They are often used to, to create complex uh, words uh, with difficult semantics, but these words were spread unevenly uh, later uh, in certain extracts of the text, such as uh, in the example presented on the slide. 
high. In this example, uh, you see five syntactic occasionalisms in the same sentence. But as you can see, uh, they are surrounded by <coughs> simple words. It's a uh, pretty representative example. To analyze the position of such words in the original text, uh, most of them have to do with the position of the construction. Uh, it was pretty difficult to uh, categorize the models of complex words, number of components in such lexes. Uh, was from 8 to 15. I'm sorry for interrupting you. Uh, please switch off your mics because we hear a background noise. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the slide uh, presents the longest uh, syntactic occasionalism. Uh, there were two of such uh, words in the text. Uh, the most frequent type of occasionalism was the third three components occasionalism. On the one hand, it seems uh, that using uh, such vivid uh, uh, lexical devices uh, helps, helps to underline uh, the special form of the text. On the other hand, information is not productive in Russian language. It's even uh, not identified in Russian language. Uh, using uh, many of such words in Russian text makes uh, text uh, more difficult to understand. And there are a number of uh, factors defining uh, translation uh, tactic, such as uh, an individual style of the author, for example. Uh, uh, the possible translation strategies are long translation or descriptive translation. On the one hand, it seems that it's easy to use a lot to use long translation, but we uh, identified uh, long translation only in four cases out of seven. Another uh, another strategy is changing the syntactic structure. Uh, sometimes descriptive translation is the more is a more useful technique. Here you see such translation. We also identified such techniques as modulation uh, or decided to use uh, some of the words in translation. In most of the uh, in most of the cases, uh, there are numerous uh, transformations used in the uh, translation. For example, for example, you see a combination of concretization and translation. And uh, try not various transformation can also be a productive technique, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it will look good in the translated text. In some cases, transformations are not enough. In our point of view, uh, there is an good approach to translate in syntactic occasionalisms. We can analyze it on the following example. I know deep beneath my head held high, meet their ice persona. As you can see, there is an accumulation of occasionalisms here. Uh, using a uh, lot translation would uh, make the text, uh, the translated text um, difficult to understand. Uh, here is a possible strategy of choosing translation devices. 
which was analyzed in the context and uh, taking into account the fact that it would have an impact on interlanguage interpretation. Uh, uh, this technique is easy to deverbal. Here is the possible translation. Uh, it completely reflects uh, the semantics of the original language. We have only two minutes left. Yeah, I remember. Uh, here is a possible. Here are the conclusions of my presentation. I would like to underline typological equivalence um, between a complex noun in English and attributive words in Russian are not a priority. Uh, as a translation, if you can use uh, translation, descriptive translation or modulation. Uh, in most difficult cases, it is necessary to interpret uh, the text using cognitive schemes. Uh, that's all I want to say. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I hope you do have some. Uh, thank you, Sabaeva, for your presentation. If there are any questions, um, uh, I'd be glad to answer them. Uh, I have one question. My question is not uh, related to translation. It's uh, a rather linguistic question. Uh, could you try to explain why such uh, long occasionals Uh, composed of several uh, words, have become so popular. They are uh, rather not. Uh, they are language models rather than occasionalisms. Why are they so popular? Yes, in uh, English language is rather a language model, uh, and it is frequently used in text, uh, almost in all the texts. I believe it's related uh, to an increased um, uh, we tend to read uh, quicker and create an image um, in our head, head with a But it's more uh, of a characteristic of uh, English language. Uh, such an occasionalism arises in Russian language, oh, but there, this model is not so productive in Russian language. Uh, the key factor of it is um, a quicker pace of life, I believe. Um, uh, the, the editor of this text was uh, uh, an editor of uh, comic books, and I believe uh, it also had an impact uh, on the style of the text. Maybe that's one that was one of the factors of uh, thank you very much if there are no questions I believe we can pass the floor to the next speaker this is Maximenko Olga will speak about things that will be connected uh, with the previous report, and we will speak about the features of the homonym adaptive uh, translation from Russian into English. Uh, so uh, then I ask to prepare um, Olga, uh, because your report is the next one. Uh, so I give you the floor. I can't start your presentation. So, dear colleagues, uh, so my report uh, will be out of uh, your, but as we 
we speak about the translatology and uh, translation. So naturally, as uh, it has been said, my theme will be connected with the previous reports. Uh, I want to say that I will speak about uh, rather unique uh, theme for the modern practice of translation because it is devoted to the audiovisual translation or the translation of uh, homonyms uh, from English into Russian. I would say that uh, there is no um, not many researchers in uh, adaptive transla adaptive translation. Uh, it is usually from uh, English into Russian, but not from Russian into English. So uh, all we know, all of us know that now the Lemil texts are rather rare and um, linguistic studies are devoted to the hybrid text or polycode text. And one of these objects is a uh, film text, uh, which is connected with other codes. Uh, so there is a quote of uh, Pushkin who thinks that uh, film text is a, is a message uh, made of verbal and uh, unverbal uh, codes. And it is created uh, for the perception on the screen. And many studies are connected with this area. But one of the features of the film text is uh, that it needs localization. And, uh, and many people from uh, many countries should uh, see it. So here we need adaptive translation, uh, audio uh, visual translation. And the translation of pneumonia. Uh, I should say that methods of the uh, audiovisual translation uh, is, uh, is, uh, is with uh, different disciplines, and uh, there should be some new ways to translate, of, uh, for example, spoilers. I can say that for this uh, research, Uh, we chose uh, some uh, filmonyms from uh, Smishariki uh, of the classical period uh, from 2004 uh, to 2009 uh, into English. So there is a European English and uh, American English variants. So here we will say how these uh, translations are made. So we chose uh, it by several reasons. Uh, firstly, it, um, people say that uh, this uh, series is uh, rather unique uh, among Russian uh, series um, because uh, it uh, describes the world without violence. And uh, there is also a lot of irony or humor and some uh, reference uh, which we will study today. It is uh, interesting not only for children, but also for adults. So uh, as you see, it is um, translated in 60 countries and translated into 15 uh, languages. And uh, British and American translated, uh, translators um, translated this uh, series and then they have for European audience. As I have said, this uh, series is full of uh, intertext and uh, feminism, uh, which is um, a point of difficulty uh, for translation. So the features of the film text, are, uh, you can see them on the screen. I will say it again. So, uh, it is difficult to uh, um, translate film volumes 
of nomination. So we can see uh, film text in translation uh, in English and in Russian. So the main um, uh, the main example is well known in Russia film uh, The Basic Instinct. And it is uh, it was translated in Rush into Russian in the same way. But uh, the American and English translators uh, translated it in the other way as maternal instincts and boys and girls. Explained uh, by the fact that in the society uh, there is an association uh, of the instinct with the plot and some uh, even some heroes or uh, actors. And it is it was unacceptable for the American culture. Uh, so we uh, got some uh, range of uh, filmoniums, filmoniums. So the sport uh, shows the intrigue of the plot. So we don't use the word spoiler uh, as a term in translatology. Uh, it has uh, several uh, ways of usage in Russian, uh, for example, and as a technical term and as a uh, term of film study. It is well known that uh, this term uh, has created, uh, uh, has appeared in 1971 uh, in the journal National Lampoon, and so it's used it to uh, to reveal the uh, plot. So then it uh, became a term in the film study and uh, there is also a verb in Russian language and uh, now it means the, means the message about the uh, development of the plot. Uh, so Netflix uh, made a great research in 2015 uh, to find out the attitude of the audience to the spoiler. And so the attitude was negative. So, uh, we found out that spoilers are uh, um, are widely spread in American culture. So, so in the slides, I show you the variants of the translation that uh, can be um, understood as spoilers uh, that reveals not only the uh, plot, but Mm -hmm. uh, but it also uh, adds the uh, additional uh, intertext for the American uh, audience. So we can say that there are several uh, variants of the adaptive uh, translation for American market uh, where uh, the spoiler is used. So the first variant is of the adaptive um, translation is the um, Film study uh, term where uh, the plot is revealed. Uh, the second uh, variant is uh, using of the uh, common uh, words. Uh, it can be well known uh, references, for example, to the games or to the well known films, for example, me, myself, and I. And the third variant is. Um, a language play uh, with the help of quotation. So you see the example. And sometimes uh, we can uh, use the quotations from the Shakespeare. Uh, so, uh, for example, we translate uh, the name of the uh, film Fred uh, Chance, when on the other hand, it is it means the illusion of the chance. And on the other hand, it means it is a sport the plot of the episode. So the conclusion is that uh, while localization of uh, audiovisual production 
it is the only one possible uh, it is the only possible uh, strategy and the client uh, defines uh, what what strategy will be used and the spoiler is a new uh, translation tactics because for the audience it is uh, so the audience should know what is going on and uh, if the film is uh, worth watching. So, so the term spoiler is one of the ways of audio visual translation. So it is uh, more, uh, it is easier for the, um, um, for the people to understand it. And the audience, um, wants to know about the uh, plot about of the film so the translator should take into account um, that it is one of the dominating process of the localization thank you for your attention uh, thank you um, Olga. are there any questions if uh, no i uh, so we should start the following report so thank you uh, for your report it was very interesting so there are new things uh, were revealed and if there will be some questions we will return to it so the next report is about uh, semantics a transposition of english and afterwards I would kindly ask Ms. Zomo to prepare for her talk. So, uh, thank you. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues, dear participants of the conference. I would like to. Okay. Let be so there is slideshow slide uh, i do not reveal it on the red line on the red line please you want to make it full screen uh, the right from the word main slide uh, to the right I am sorry, I wanted to be better. So, dear colleagues, uh, let me present the result of the analysis. Um, I conducted, among other experiments, writing about Literary translation about the mechanisms of um, um, change of meaning of slang word. It is about the um, re relevance of the translation material. Uh, man, uh, we define procedural. Semantics, uh, them with the uh, matches. Uh, the task is uh, to look at slang words on the basis of uh, semantics triangle. Uh, research included analysis of uh, the pertinence of the translation transformation used to transfer uh, the analysis of the One other method used the method of lexicography analysis 
Oxford dictionaries. We interpreted information from them. We use statistics to study the frequency of semantic transposition and the topicality the fact that change in society are the reason for slightly from gaining new things, which leads to ideas. The mechanism of change of semantics processes of metaphorization, metanimization, subjectification, grammaticalization, and cognitive mechanism of analogy, perception, these uh, positions can be used to analyze semantic transposition of some words in standard language. Uh, we can um, do uh, such an analysis to a non-standard um, speech slang and the uh, social demographic environment of the words also should be analyzed. Fixed meanings. They only uh, lead to creation of meanings because words in the context, distribution of in discourse, in social demographic and uh, social political changes in the society, extra linguistic factors, and uh, material to. I, me, message transposition of slang. Uh, scientists say that it is necessary to systematize and study slang because literature standard is impossible without elements of slang, and slang cannot exist with the elements of standard. Um, can help to preserve the style of speech, which is relevant for translation There is a fragment uh, the read the fragment in the etymological dictionary. This word derives from old Scandinavia, and in the end of the 15th century, it had literary meaning of uh, It was interpreted in social cultural environment. It was referred to forgers. And in American slang, it is a robber. But it is a name of bandits who mid 19th century it meant a woman, um, a woman robber. It also meant people who uh, deprived and uh, it also meant slang is used in texts of the, those periods with its connotations and uh, uh, those words who have some if we use the concept of semantic um, so the word is for a skin is one of the of the Denotate which this um, with which this like um, unit is made. 
on this uh, slide form has uh, such features of the class of the uh, distinguish it from so it is a significant it, it reflects uh, the um, the features of this class of objects it is the of the work and so, so uh, this uh, feature for the third time and it is around and, um, and power these social aspects refer to condition by cultural situation so two minutes uh, in russian translation it is translated as Detina. there was no such a match um, in any in any uh, etymology um, dictionary and this uh, reference is the addition big hate and powerful body and another this word form is interpreted uh, in a uh, it is um, explained by the variant of, 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 of of work with cattle, um, but there is difference uh, between uh, these words. And this semantic transition was explained by um, the fact that those who work with leather also cattle. So reverent and um, and its significance. Uh, do for instance, the result, the uh, research opinion has changed. So we see this semantic change. I want to read it. But this transfer uh, from literary language to conversational language. Uh, so sometimes these people. Uh, uh, dissolved, and, uh, they, uh, so the rest has changed. New authors are raised um, to a new association through historical semantics. With time, records have changed, and the significant have the metaphor and the, it is a concept who uses is um, it is composed the of the words so pragmatic the and play the main slang forms transposition of a form transposition distribution of what form influences semantic transposition it will exist if this meaning is accepted by a social factor in 65 percent what is semantic transposition in 20 but it did not change completely in this 10 percent units have their meaning with time and other uh, transformations used to and modulation uh, and these experiments will be included in the monography and they will be used to, to um, educate our translators. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Shubina, questions, uh, please ask them. If you do not have any questions, I would like to move on to the next report.
некоторое время. Я считаю, что в конце нашего заседания можно будет задать вопросы или сделать свои комментарии. А сейчас... Then there will be reports by Albina Bayarkina, Yulia Tikhomirova, and Alina Pogodina. Ms. Rozumovskaya will tell us about the translation of ethnic texts. I pass the floor to you. Just a minute. Значит, мы будем говорить о новой тенденции. Talking about new trends in translation of ethnic texts. Ms. Rozumovskaya, the floor is yours. Just a moment. Dear colleagues, I would like to present to you my conclusions relating uh, to the translation of uh, work uh, I period and we are carrying out uh, studies uh, of the culture of small people. Contemporary translation uh, researchers have a new text. As Ms. Korshner mentioned in 2010, hyperfunction uh, is uh, interlingual function. Later in 2012, Mr. Garbovsky uh, uh, analyzed uh, what uh, the aim of uh, the translation studies are. Uh, the, the question is uh, how the translator should interpret culture presented in their text, in particular in ethnic texts. Uh, here you see the questions are related to the culture of the original text and what the translator should do with it. First of all, we should understand uh, which instruments are translated to decode the original text. At the same time, we should understand uh, uh, how to teach translator to translate this type of. And now I would like to quote Ms. Alexeyeva, who said that translators should, must know um, more than any other. A white known simultaneous interpretation expert, Soskovich, said that uh, a translator must have a similar uh, intellectual level as the speaker. Therefore, a translator uh, must have not only professional competence, but have a big cultural background. A translator must have his own and uh, ethnic memory for translating. Now I'd like to speak about cultural memory. Uh, nowadays, uh, it is associated with translation. Here you see a couple of definitions. Of uh, for example, a definition provided by, uh, by German Egyptologist. Egyptologist. Some researchers believe that it is an interpretation of cultural uh, meanings. Veronika Adolfovna, Ms. Rozumovska. We lost connection with you. What happened? Yes, I'm here. We had a long conference. Excuse me, please. Veronika Adolfovna said that she has a very good relationship. So, perhaps there are some delays. Thank you. Thank you very much. Так бывает, сейчас выбила. Да, именно, именно. Ладно, идем, идем. 
Коллеги, может быть, позвоните Вероника Адольфовне? Maybe we should call her. Анас, будьте добры, свяжитесь, пожалуйста, по WhatsApp. Я написала. Мы ждем. Вероника Дольфовна заходит в конференцию. Ой, извините, я не знаю, что это было, но я сейчас опять подсоединяюсь. Я просто выбила. Да, что мне делать? Продолжать? Да, 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 конечно. Yes, we hear you. Just a moment. Do you see the presentation? Well, we see it now. Sorry for the problems with connection. Okay, I'm talking about cultural memory that helps to understand the world of diversity. In this case, we should understand how to shape cultural memory of a translator. Here you see a couple of other definitions of cultural memory. Sometimes it is defined as a social phenomenon. As you can see, there are various methodologies which is applied to cultural memory. Some researchers regard it as an archaeology of knowledge. Now, I would like uh, to speak about the study material. Here you see a map of uh, Siberia in the region of um, Yenisei River. Uh, there are 120 ethnic groups living there and a lot of small numbered nations. Uh, we were the first to study their culture. Uh, Siberian Federal University carries out a project on the preservation of the uh, Evenki culture, Evenki language. One of the challenges is um, preserving uh, the language and their unique culture. This slide uh, presents a number of uh, characters of child literature in the languages of small numbered nations. Uh, it's worth noting uh, that uh, an increase in national identity helps to um, maintain um, language culture. Uh, here you see a various approaches to studying ch children's literature. Uh, they have a very important uh, function, uh, such as uh, teaching national identity to children. One of the key forms of child literature is fairy tale, which serves as an information uh, capsule. It serves as a link between the reality and myth. Fairy tales are a reflection of uh, the nation's past, present, and future. The Evenki or uh, the Tungus people are one of the small uh, number of nations in Russia. Uh, this map uh, presents uh, the region where they live. These are the settlements of the Evenki people in uh, Krasnoyarsk Krai. As I've mentioned before, uh, 
Siberian Federal University on the study and small number of nations culture. Uh, here is one of the books uh, prepared by the university. I participated I've been participating in this project. We analyzed uh, the existing uh, chapter literature of the event before. There are not so many of them. We identified uh, uh, certain features of uh, an event fairy tale, uh, such as the representation of uh, mythological uh, conscious. Uh, we also published a uh, translation of the event fairy tales here. Uh, a couple of uh, of event uh, children's books. Uh, the dark uh, uh, represents uh, texts in event and Russian language. Our project is also at uh, creating new uh, child literature here of uh, words by we concluded uh, that it would be interesting to study not only uh, children's literature in eventual language, uh, but also to understand what ethnic text is. An ethnic text is a reflection of national, national identity. Uh, a connected uh, notion is ethnic literature, ethnic translation, and We can potentially uh, talk about ethnic translation studies. Ethnic translation studies uh, can be regarded, can be studied as uh, one of the related studies. Ethnic translation studies as a term is a pretty recent term. These are the extracts uh, uh, from a work by a Romanian researcher. She gave a definition of an ethnic translation of ethnic translation studies. Uh, here are the uh, terms that can be used uh, both in English, French, and Russian. Uh, the researcher uh, says that ethnic uh, translation is a type of translation studied by ethnic translation studies. And this type of translation studies uses uh, the uh, research of ethnographics. Uh, here are the works referred by the Romanian researcher, such as the work by Berman of 1984, and the work by researcher uh, Stefanik, who studied ethnic translation studies. Uh, uh, Ethnic uh, translation studies are very popular in Kazakhstan. Uh, a researcher Kopolenko uh, spoke a lot about uh, ethnic translation studies in his work. Thus, uh, we uh, can speculate that uh, in the future, ethnic translation studies may become uh, a new interpretive area of humanitarian studies. It may be based uh, both on translation studies and on ethnic studies such as ethnology, ethnography, ethnic methodology, ethnic linguistics, ethnic psychology, and others. We believe uh, these studies should be uh, incorporated uh, in the translation courses uh, in the regions of Russia. For example, it's uh, easier to uh, what British parliament in English language, uh, while 
it is difficult to explain uh, many ethnic phenomena uh, only in Russian language. We believe uh, it's an interesting area of studies. Thank you for your attention. Sorry uh, for interrupted presentation. Thank you very much, Mr. Zmoski. Are there any questions? Yes, I have a question. Mr. Zmoski, uh, who do you think could become an ethnic uh, translation student? Should it be a bilingual or a tribal person? Uh, for example, the Venti people are the bilingual or trilingual. They speak Russian. Uh, a language and uh, sometimes another foreign language. But uh, it's difficult uh, to find uh, the scientists who would want to study um, this area. But I believe uh, that ethnic translation studies must be incorporated uh, in uh, translation programs uh, in our universities. Uh, for example, the university recently opened uh, the university on the basis of the culture, uh, cultural uh, department. Uh, we, uh, we hope that these studies will be attract attractive uh, both uh, to Russians and to, uh, the, to uh, ethnic uh, The key point is to develop uh, the specialized programs will be used for teaching. Thank you very much. Are there any questions? Uh, I have a question. Uh, the linguist uh, uh, who study this uh, languages uh, know their but would be able, they be able to translate the text in uh, national languages? Uh, without the help of uh, ethnic I believe that uh, practically it's uh, difficult uh, and it's a secret to translate. I agree with you. Uh, but you see, uh, this won't be uh, very wide studies. They will be aimed at a uh, few students. But these programs will produce culture, uh, cultural researchers and linguists. These texts exist, and we should work with them. Of course, we are primarily speaking about translation, not interpreting. Of course, in emerging situations, interpreting may be necessary. Yeah, especially when you uh, translate uh, folk texts. Yeah, there were uh, words uh, translate from translation from uh, into English. And this experience. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Zamovska. If there are no other questions, I would like to pass the floor to the next speaker. Uh, his report is devoted to the intralingual and interlingual uh, synonymy. The next uh, one will be uh, Irina Ivanovna. Uh, get prepared.
Добрый день, уважаемые коллеги, меня слышно? Uh, so, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, first of all, I wanted to ask the uh, organizers of, for their uh, work, for the opportunity to communicate with each other and so uh, let's speak about uh, the object of the research, uh, the threat the uh, system of German and uh, Ukrainian and um, adjective uh, verbs that are based on the adjectives and um, such uh, linguistics are traditionally called uh, incursive. If we uh, compare uh, two uh, sentences in German and Ukrainian, uh, the Alta Garten is falling and uh, uh, Garden uh, uh, became wild. Uh, so I hope that you understand it. So, uh, or maybe, for example, uh, the German that get right this is much better, and Ukrainian, um, uh, the heart uh, is game ready. So uh, the German uh, rifling um, is, is equivalent for uh, verb uh, distigati. So things that lexeme is not the unit of translation, but uh, the word is the uh, unit uh, of meaning in the language. And uh, very often it is the word uh, pays his attention. The focus of the research of the translational uh, transformation is um, very often uh, paid to the comparison of the words. And uh, there is um, the, uh, the, the um, uh, so such uh, verbs uh, in German and Ukrainian uh, are not uh, are not studied. So the aim of the research is to ensure of interlingual uh, um, verbs in uh, Ukrainian and their capacity. Uh, it is the so we continue, continue the comparison of uh, uh, adjectival books, uh, occasional semantics on the base of English languages, and interesting how to translate. And if to speak about uh, tasks, so we want to. Uh, to compare uh, means of uh, to means in different uh, levels with the accent on the uh, ad adjective. Uh, so we want to find out uh, bilingual pair Ukrainian and German, and uh, we also wanted to study translation of Ukrainian inclusive uh, verbs into German. The material of the research are uh, encoded uh, adverbal uh, verbs, um, encoded uh, constructions, and the constructions encoded and uh, the comparison of the words based on the uh, information from the definition. Uh, when we studied uh, the synonymy uh, of the semantics, we find out that uh, not every uh, occasional construction is equivalent, but in English, uh, 
Ukrainian so, uh, such synonymous uh, fair uh, raccoons. So if we uh, take one pair, for example, part of uh, this, uh, this work is not existing in uh, modern short uh, but it were what in the old German uh, it meant uh, because in Ukraine uh, there is a, an acceptable word uh, uh, means what which means and it is uh, it now exists in Ukraine. Uh, uh, the Ukrainian is more uh, is better language for the creating uh, such group of words. Uh, they are created from the uh, adjectives uh, of the uh, comparison, compare uh, also uh, level. So the equivalence to the Ukrainian uh, in German are uh, lexical semantic uh, equivalents, uh, like adjectival verbs, for example, get longer as if uh, um, become short than uh, lexical semantic. Uh, uh, equivalence as empty construction uh, uh, for example get uh, better or get uh, thicker it is uh, based on the adjective in uh, Ukrainian so in German it is construction uh, also this translation become fatter or uh, so then as lexical meaning which are not uh, adjective verbs For example, of Clara, get clear. Uh, as a result of the analysis of this pair, we find out that the language is And in translation, we can uh, produce not, but also uh, the way of uh, uh, so there are uh, several examples. We should also mention that uh, these verbs are used in different levels of language. So the large part of encoded uh, verbs uh, very limited in usage. Uh, they are archaic or they are very rarely used. So there are also several examples on the slide. Uh, the most part of the Ukrainian Sephorps are uh, widespread. Uh, only 5% are limited in usage. Uh, so you have only two minutes. Uh, thank you. Uh, most. Uh, so, so lexical features um, are not uh, able, to, not able to, to translate. So uh, German stylistic art uh, uh, by the hand, woman-like, is uh, based on the uh, adjective uh, woman-like. In Russian, it's uh, the similar verb, 
uh, that means become uh, woman like woman. Uh, it, this word is limited in usage, and in translation, uh, the most adequate uh, um, uh, equivalent is uh, translation with the verb. So I have found several um, examples with the term uh, and I translated it into Ukrainian and Russian. Uh, so the, the sentence means uh, due to the home uh, woman. Uh, so, uh, in conclusion, uh, I can say that in both language, uh, to um, we use um, encoded uh, construction, but in German. Uh, Equivalence in uh, Ukrainian for this um, uh, for this um, in some occasions. Uh, corpus of the adjectival groups of Ukrainian language uh, is much like uh, German corpus. It is like times and uh, not. not uh, these constructions, uh, these ability constructions in every language. So I missed uh, the slide. So thank you for your attention, dear colleagues. Uh, thank you for listening uh, Let's move on to the next talk uh, by Ms. Elkin. Uh, we will return to political discourse. We will talk about music terminology uh, in political discourse. I invite uh, Ms. Albina Boyarkina to speak to the audience. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. I would like to um, divert our discussion um, to Interesting um, usage. So politicians um, use euphemisms uh, with increased impact on the music term is direct and metaphorical It has imageability. It the expressions ironic, negative reactions, move some information, it emotionally affects the audience. There are some examples to illustrate um, this subject. This accord is um, an instrument if it is not signed by the United States. The uh, uh, Eckert is used in a metaphorical meaning, and this job functions here uh, as um, in another meaning. And in this uh, wing, this term is used in the uh, if we believe the leaks from the government, uh, the rights of pension age um, is, is decided, but finally, the end of presidential period. 
and this term is also used in sentence final record taking into account uh, how much the administration has said about Russian immigration. Symphony uh, is also used uh, symphony, of, symphony of layers, symphony of state, harmony, 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 and it's curious of interest, harmony of income. Uh, uh, music, such music term in leads to according to Kent, this trio proclaimed themselves the amigos trio uh, music terminology is uh, heterogeneous. There are influences from Italy, uh, Andante, Giova, or Genus, Sonata, or Corpus, There are also and Greek terms. For example, uh, Kiri Elysium, Gloria, the end, um, languages, but special music terminology is rarely used because it needs the context uh, in natural and sounds comical or negative. So here's an example. After she moved to the USA, she was in a restaurant, and etc. So it is a conversation variant of the name of the instrument. Um, uh, teach uh, means um, in uh, teaching in a university. It is a specialist. It is political discourse uh, and uh, translated. Should, uh, treat it very carefully. Should treat the use of special terminology very carefully. So teach to play the piano. Um, uh, so we can teach to play uh, for the piano. So, uh, piano is a conversational verb. Piano is the Indian century and is also an era of historic nature. century, uh, only some uh, key, uh, other um, instruments. Um, and this uh, in German and uh, um, is a term uh, which can be used for a person who plays in bars in restaurants. Who uh, doesn't play classical music? Pianist is pianist. And there is also difference between musician and musica. Uh, musica uh, is used um, about street musicians, and musica is about um, musicians who play classical. 
Uh, when we return to political discourse, I should um, say that uh, there um, is not uh, the case because it might um, it might um, create some mistakes. But uh, we use common musical terms or some uh, phraseology what the musical, um, musical terminology is used to direct or metaphorical meanings. So there are two examples of, so play uh, the first fiddle and have uh, When we translate these terms, there will be some errors, some mistakes, uh, for, uh, during a short period of his activities, he returned uh, around the status of Grand Pop. He um, gave another town of Russian conduct. It is an error. And this town of speech. Uh, uh, I will never tolerate such a tone of speech. So speech is um, ex excessive here. And tone has different meanings, and there are phraseologisms, set phrases with it. And if I translate them, um, hmm, encounter such a term, uh, it can. Um, Clear, clear, clarify it. So, um, in the German language, uh, musical terms are used more often than in the Russian language. Uh, here are terms, uh, abstract, unplanned, uh, used more often than in the Russian or instruments. Uh, and other instruments are used and um, while used most often. Um, and as far as uh, translation is concerned, um, of musical translation of musical terminology is concerned, I should mention that the function of this terminology is to decorate uh, the speech and make it more expressive by increasing the style in a neutral environment. Um, there are more German texts uh, we can use different ways uh, to transfer. There will be matches, but they are not always made in German and Russian world. Um, terms of nations, or uh, we can only convey the meaning. Because, uh, it is important to underline that the genuine is aimed at conveying the and sometimes musical terms substituted or eliminated. Its, its role is not the for a no translation, it can be omitted. So if you don't have any questions, let's move on to the next предыдущий, потому что мы будем рассматривать на опере примеры на примере оперы Евгений Онегин в англоязычных переводах между 
Uh, this presentation is prepared by Yulia Kamirova. Good afternoon, dear colleagues. Can you see my presentation? Thank you very much. I won't read out the name of my report, everyone uh, on the screen. My, uh, is, um, my, my report deals with local translation that actualizes the method of functional languages various types of translation with uh, other studies. So the uh, links between uh, translation types. Local translation is one of uh, prospective uh, studies in uh, world humanitarian sciences. It helps to uh, study the basis of national cultural identity. I aim to analyze the expense of cultures Today, as the entertainment industry is on the increase, uh, such as operas, musicals, and foreign languages, that uh, defines the uh, issue of uh, quality and aesthetic, aesthetic uh, value. Uh, the translation uh, of uh, music works uh, is challenged uh, by the problem of uh, uh, the importance of taking into account the second of Christian music. Local translation is one of the subtypes um, of oral translation. It's one of the most difficult uh, types of aesthetic acti activity. Uh, th this uh, topic was studied by, both by uh, Russian and international scientists. Does Hornby law vocal translation is widely added in uh, foreign uh, discourse? One of the key works in this field is the work by Mark Herman that deals with vocal translation. The author has authority years of experience and translated over 20 operas. The translation of musical uh, works uh, deals both with uh, theory and practice questions. Uh, it is also related to the music. Uh, here is a quote from the book by Ronnie Alter and Mark Herman. Translating for singing. They explore topics applicable to general translation, such as organization and domestication, adaptation or translation, and multiple translation, cultural and general differences and shifts, and such shifts and show how the complex translations of music speech, such as the constraints imposed by music and musical forms, the, the extent to which music and words delineate character, the mechanisms of rhythm, rhyme, and repetition sound and sense, limitations imposed by the human voice, and the frequent need to put the right word on uh, the right musical note. Peter Newark, in his um, article of 2012, proposes uh, several ideas about the objectives of local translation. According to him, uh, it has a double function. Uh, the musical tr music translation is uh, aimed at uh, reflecting various tones and rhythm of uh, music in uh, foreign language. Uh, as for uh, original presentation of vocal translation, the practice as follows. In 18th uh, centuries, uh, uh, operas were more popular in translation than in original language. Uh, in the uh, 19th, 20th century, 20th century uh, the translation of operas uh, was a sign of um, the success of uh, operas. Uh, here is a quote by Edith Worth in Notable and questionable law musical worlds required that the French, that the German text of French opera sung by such artists should be translated into Italian for the clearer understanding of English speaking audiences. 
пример можно привести раннюю историю An example is early history of, um, of uh, the opera Eugen Onegin by Tchaikovsky translation into European languages. They were, the translations were made right after uh, the presentation of the opera, and it was a huge success. Seventy-eight, and was first staged uh, in uh, the Mali theater. After that, it was uh, staged in uh, at least nine uh, foreign languages in Europe. In the second half of uh, the 20th century, uh, the operas in the original language became more popular. Uh, however, uh, the operas uh, exist both in the original and foreign language in electronic format. Uh, the matter of choosing the language uh, is uh, defining in musical translation. Uh, the developed technical means become uh, the less is the requirement, the less is demand for translation. Readable translation becomes uh, the priority. And this study focuses on the English translation of uh, the opera Eugene Onegin. In particular, the translation by uh, David uh, John. John's this is a single, called single translation. The second uh, translation and study is also widely known. It was prepared uh, by it was prepared for the uh, theatrical program, and it was a so-called readable translation. It is not a complete equivalent of them, uh, but it, is a, it was a rather vocal and lyrical presentation of the audience, uh, speaking audience, the whole like the general idea about opera. I also used the less known translation as a question. The first point of the study was identifying composition of the clarities of the libretto. Uh, on the one hand, uh, the style of Alexander Pushkin uh, should be a simplified factor of translation. Uh, libretto of uh, Onegin. Onegin was uh, uh, based uh, on the novel in uh, by Pushkin. Uh, they are uh, presented uh, on the slides. Uh, I will not comment on them now. <laughs> you have only two minutes left. Uh, the first variant is the event basis. It is mainly uh, the spoken um, part of the opera uh, that uses uh, slides and simplified language. Here you see a couple of extracts uh, from the Russian and English libretos. As you can see, uh, the challenge was to, <coughs> to achieve communicational and uh, cultural aims of translation. The text is uh, vocal, uh, and the uh, translator uh, had no opportunity to give any comment to the text. When working with such text, translators should be careful. Here are parts uh, of the novel that were incorporated in the bread to uh, almost without any changes. For example, the uh, uh, the example from one of my favorite translation, it sounds like, thank God he died a few weeks later. Uh, Onegin is a bit different character in English translation, uh, but there are over 30 uh, 
translations of this um, extract. However, in opera, the translation of uh, the stories is uh, very different from the Russian one. Next are the uh, novel based uh, with search and modifications. Uh, by using a highlighter, uh, I wanted to, to show the development of text. Uh, but all in all, the same can be uh, same can be used about this translation as about uh, the previous points. Uh, if interest are folk songs used uh, in the opera, namely the songs by servant girls and uh, the peasants. Uh, the translation of this part uh, was also not an easy task to, due to cultural specifics. And the last uh, point is my favorite one. I study vocal translation uh, six months. And this is an extract uh, from a romantic song, uh, Tatiana and Olga. Uh, it is not uh, present in the original novel by uh, Pushkin, but it was like an opera. Romantic songs are different subject of translation uh, and of course uh, the specifics of this translation imply uh, reflecting all the uh, cultural genre and national popularity a russian romantic song is an established uh, music genre determined by Russian national tradition. Uh, as you can see, uh, there is an expression Love Six Shepherd Boy in English translation. Boy Jones translated it as Love Six Shepherd Boy. The second translation uh, is the singer, and the third one is the voice. This uh, cultural peculiarity should be taken into account when translating, especially when you translate such extracts with national genre and cultural uh, Thank you for your attention. Are there any questions? Thank you, Mr. Kamerova. Please feel free to There's a question. Uh, right, that her master student is a professional singer. Thanks. You can provide my context to her. Actually, uh, this is the conclusion I wanted men to mention. A musical translation and its cooperation between arts uh, researchers and translators. It can be called a synthetic genre. And I haven't even uh, mentioned uh, the visual aspect of uh, the opera. Also, it has an impact on translation. Thank you very much. Uh, it is a very interesting topic, in my opinion. And it was interesting to, to hear your presentation about Eugene Onegin.
Шала Гива Флоу Тру Зе Мис Алина Гульна, Вич Вете Ольга Гегол, Питает Зе Пипоч Бах Зе Специфик Тичерс, Тичин Транслейшн и Интернешн Организейшн. And after this report, I will uh, give you several minutes for one more uh, speaker for the non-Russian speaker. And in several words, she will speak about her theme. Uh, so if someone uh, needs uh, translation, we have a uh, simultaneous translation. Um, uh, so, uh, at the end of our discussion, uh, everyone uh, will be able to speak uh, about things which uh, influenced you and which have perspectives of the further study. Uh, so, thank you. So, Ms. Um, Alina Alexandrovna, uh, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. All the uh, previous speakers and uh, the reports are very interesting. Uh, so, uh, today I will uh, speak about uh, specific features of the situation in the international so, on so, the material was uh, the material of the UN and of the international organization of supreme uh, institutions. And so we wanted to pay attention uh, of the teachers. Uh, so there is a, a, a connection of the uh, lagoons, of the borrowed words, and of the um, industry words. Um, there is a strong connection between uh, them. So it is also very important to remember uh, there is uh, lacoons and um, contextual based work. Uh, so here we can see uh, the principle of appearance. Uh, in theory, course of translate, translation, uh, teachers speak about lacoons, uh, industry words, and borrowings, and sometimes uh, contextual uh, based words. But what is uh, important to remember for the translator and for the teacher that in practice, uh, one word can be both lacoon and ne neologism and context based uh, words. So it can be many words, many features in one word. People say that uh, it is uh, not very good to use uh, undeveloped. Um, undeveloped terms in translation and uh, terminalization is uh, very rare uh, mentioned. Uh, it appears when uh, there is a great amount of information in one translation uh, and the word became a term and it is translated equally in uh, the framework of this uh, organization. Uh, so Students very rarely um, interpret uh, a great amount of um, information. So there is no such problem in practice. So how can we define this? They can be uh, terminal and they can be terminal. So if there is a uh, terminalization, we should uh, unbearing of translation. Uh, so there is an example of unterminalized lacoon. It is not a term, it is just used in different contexts in its, uh, with its meaning, and it is translated uh, according to the context. Uh, uh, so in this slide, you can see examples uh, of the International Organization Supreme Audit Institution standards, and we can translate these words in different ways, but in the translator, uh, well, 
uh, translating these words, uh, you should uh, use uh, the single parents because because they can be used uh, as they are given here. For example, outcome, uh, as it is a technical text. Uh, so outcome will uh, have one meaning and we should translate it uh, in one way. Uh, someone uh, appears false in the data. For example, when the client sees um, integrity, if there was integrity, he thinks it is an important term and he thinks uh, it is uh, in the way that is shown in the slide. And the text became overweighted. But here it is not a term. And it can be translated as ethics, as uh, honesty, and some other ways. In some other ways. So it is a false uh, translation. Uh, and a uh, translator cannot. Sometimes. It's a problem with uh, terminalization of uh, titles. For example, for example, there is uh, an organization uh, called uh, International Organization of Supreme or Deep Institution. In your context, uh, they are translated uh, in the different ways. Uh, there are also uh, variant like uh, supreme audit institutions, and it is sometimes called uh, the supreme financial uh, control institution. Uh, the difference is connected with the existence of the word audit, and uh, earlier this uh, word was. Um, so people understand it is uh, as a uh, lacoon or undeveloped uh, borrowing. But now uh, it is a term in our language. So in Russian Supreme Audit uh, Institution, we use the word uh, audit uh, freely. For example, uh, but in uh, the UN uh, they use the long variant. Uh, sometimes you have to choose uh, a variant, and it can be difficult. Also, there can be uh, universal uh, titles of the organization. Uh, sometimes they should, have, uh, should uh, choose the way to translate uh, titles. In the third, you can uh, see different, uh, different titles of one organization, but the problem is that they use different approaches to translation. Maybe it can be word for word translation, but I don't my research the way translation. Uh, maybe in the next variant we see the word audit in the uh, translation. Uh, here it is a lacoon. Uh, then the most interesting, uh, interesting variant is uh, Supreme Audit Office. Uh, it is uh, really, uh, the translator uh, thinks that it is uh, really, but in the discourse uh, of international organization, it is unacceptable. Uh, really, it uh, is the thing that is present in one culture and absent in another. And uh, this uh, variant of translation is not appropriate. Also, there is a variant in court of audit. Uh, it is uh, the court exactly, and we should translate this theme because it differs from our uh, realm. Uh, 
Uh, it is uh, the court of audit is neology, and we can find it in the results of Google res uh, search. Uh, in some variant, uh, translator uh, decided to uh, to uh, the variants uh, uh, shown in the slide. So you have two minutes. So on this slide, uh, you can see variants of the uh, this translation, uh, maybe word uh, word translation, and we should unify this and in some uh, organization we should translate uh, the term the thing in the right way as i have said these approaches are diff different and it's not good uh, what the students need and what uh, people don't say uh, don't speak very frequently frequently. Uh, so there is a strong connection uh, between terms, lacunes, uh, knowledge, and context-based work. Uh, also, students should um, study to find out uh, the occasions of organization of such verbs, and uh, they also avoid false terminalization. And uh, the students should pay attention to the approaches and methods of uh, translation and unify the titles of the organization. Uh, there is a special site uh, in Russian and I recommend to change uh, the title of this organization in the UN system because they uh, have their own uh, title and uh, students should use and so, uh, in the framework of audit organization, uh, we should choose one approach and uh, use it uh, in uh, all occasions. So, thank you for your attention. Uh, if you have questions, I am glad to answer them. And this is my con uh, contacts on the slide. Uh, thank you. Uh, are there any questions to the uh, speaker on this theme? So if there are no questions, so as I have said, there is our guest, Laila Bellardi. I uh, give the floor to her, and she will talk in five minutes. She will talk in the English language. She will present herself, but for those who um, are not sure if they uh, will understand everything she says, Suggest uh, translation. If you click it, you will see two languages, Russian and English. So to um, understand what she is uh, saying, so, um, after the talk ends, uh, don't. Um, Forget to click another language. So, Miss Lalia Belabdi, um, the floor is yours, please. Может микрофон отключен? Нет, только что включился микрофон. Lalia, can you hear us? Я написала Вале в чат. Да, Настя, и связь отключите, пожалуйста. Uh -huh. 
Так, ну, пока мы ожидаем, возможно, это займет, я надеюсь, недолгое время, я приглашаю высказаться. So wait a minute, please. And if someone um, has something to say, uh, we have listened to all the talks, or so there is the presentation, Valia. Но мы по-прежнему не слышим звука. Настя, если можно, напишите, пожалуйста. I can't hear you. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Итак, я повторяю для тех, кто uh, не сомневается, то so for those who doubt, you can um, click the translation. Will you please introduce yourself? Where are you from? Yes, I am from Algeria, and I study translation in Valladolid, Spain. And I want to present my contribution today concerning the particularity of the advertising expression and its transcreation. Yes, is everything okay? Yes, everything's okay. We can see and hear you well. Thank you. That's great. I cannot see the... The window where you shared it. Excuse me. Would you like me to show the full screen? Yes, okay. I cannot make the slides. Uh, hello, Lalia. I think yes. uh, good, good, good afternoon. Uh, you should click on Dear Parama uh, on uh, your uh, in your presentation. It's a key insertion, creation, animation, uh, diaporama. Uh, you should click that. It's not visible because I'm trying to talk through the phone and use the computer. Oh, I, I see. Uh, let, let me check one thing for you. I think there is a... Настя, у меня к вам вопрос. Может быть, она скинет в чат эту презентацию? Да. да. Или напишите ей об этом, да, потому что иначе это займет очень много времени. Ну, хорошо можем. видно, они там просто, у них блокируется верхняя часть, и они не видят панель управления. Вот. А, все, поняла. И поэтому так случается, поэтому лучше продолжать, потому что, ну, зазумить, может быть, немножко, не 68% сделать, а 70% внизу, вот там, где... If you go to scale, you can click on the scale and put instead of 68 for 75% or something, and we would see it bigger. I really don't know where. I'm, I'm so sorry. We see it okay. You can start. But I cannot make the slides. That's a problem. I cannot move on to the second page. You, 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 could, you could try just to, to push the enter button to change the slides. It's not working, really. It's not working. Oh. Okay, I'll try sharing one more time. Okay. Can you see it right now? Yes, we can. Excellent. Yeah, and the yes. slides are being changed. Yeah. Okay. Everything's fine. You can oh. begin. You're welcome. Yes, thank you. Advertisements leave nothing for coincidence. Every piece of information is examined. Its expressions aims to reach its primary purpose, which is information, conviction, 
and incentivization. And its ultimate purpose, persuading clients, translating advertisement has to reach the same goals locally and globally to communicate effectively with different audiences. So we've got here the characteristics of the advertising expression. The advertising can be multi-expressing, it's verbal, non-verbal, written, listened, and visualized. It is communicative because it's addressing a message. Persuasive, it's influential, concise, it's brief, swift, clear, memorable, appealing, catchy, and emotive, it is emotional, purposeful, it is practical, and thoughtful, it is very well examined. So changing the source advertisement happens because of the cultural relevance, the society norms, space-time framing, and the audience characteristics found in the target language. So we've got here the part of the literature review. We've got much said, consumers are products of their culture, and culture cannot be separated from the individual. It is not a system of abstract values that exists independently of individuals. Neither can culture be separated from historical context. Culture includes shared beliefs, attitudes, norms, rules, and values found among speakers of a particular language who lived during the same historical period in a specific geographical region. That was in 2004 in his page 181. We've got the second part of literature review. So to translate an advertisement, many distinctive traits are taken into account because in translation, textual relations obtaining in the original are often modified sometimes to the point of being totally ignored in favor of more habitual options offered in a target repertoire. That's for Tori, 2012, in his page 304. Another part in literature review. These changes are legitimate in transcreating advertisement for being more faithful to the receiver's expression system. So translating is creating. A translator is an artist who shapes languages. Chesterman, 1997, in his page 27. And that's what transcreator does when translating advertisements. So we've got here a study case. We have an advertisement from France. We've got the line, la dame qui t'amènera à coup sur la victoire. So we've got a suggested translation to this translation, to this, sorry, to this advertisement. We've got the lady that will lead you definitely to victory. We think that we're going to translate the advertisement. It's going to be the same. No, but for transcreation, change will happen. So we've got here the same advertisement, but for Switzerland, and we've got the translation or the transcreation as always a smart first move going to McDonald's. So we've got here the difference and the change in translating. Another study case, we've got here an outfit from Valentino exposed to USA audience. And as we can see here, it's a visual advertisement, it's not written. We've got the same outfit, but represented to South Korea. And what we can see here, that transcreation not just happened in changing the text, but also in changing visuals. What we can see here in USA, we can see that the part of the chest is open. It's okay in the USA culture, dressing code, but for example, in South Korea, East of Asia, Asia sorry, it's not okay really to show this part. So we've got here a change in the dressing code. So a discussion. Out of results and analysis, the expression system, culture, society, and space-time framing standards dictates how figures were transcreated. In figure one and two, in McDonald's, reached clients according to their expression code, poetic for French advertising versus practical for Swiss advertising. In figure three and four, Valentino used a nonverbal expression where transcreation was applied on the visual content. The USA model in figure three wore the shirt with a white V where a part of her chest was visible, but the South Korean model in South, in four, sorry, in figure four wore the same shirt where a large part of her chest was covered because Western and Eastern cultures and society's norms are distinctive in their dressing code. As a conclusion, transcreation does not happen outside the context of what translation does. It's actually one of its techniques, but the apparent difference is that the result of any other technique of translation and transcreation over different results. Therefore, each technique has its own specific intent to work on. Drastic or partial changes seem to take place in transcreating advertisement. These changes are inspired from the target expression system. 
aiming for keeping effective communication and influence valid on the target audience. Creation, creative creation of the advertising content and translating the source expression or starting from notions that can only be found in target expression is what transcreation is in charge of. Translating adequately and creating creatively. And as a result, a creative translation appears on the surface. This creation is far from being an equal version in both equivalence and effect to the source expression. It's rather unequal to be faithful to the receiver's particular expression system. You've got here some notes about the advertisements and also references. And thank you so much for having me. Большое спасибо, Лалия. Я надеюсь, переводчики переводят. Thank you for your attention. So please, everybody, switch for the Russian language. You can turn off your presentation. If um, there are any comments uh, on the discussion on today's talks, I invite you um, the dear colleagues um, I'm so sorry, I do not really understand the question, but thank you so much for having me. And if you have further questions, you can ask. Oh, I'm sorry, it wasn't translated. Uh, thank you for your, your presentation, it was very interesting, but unfortunately we're running out of time, so um, unfortunately we can't <laughs> actually discuss it any longer, although um, it was uh, really quite informative. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Уважаемые коллеги, будут ли какие-то if there are any wishes, please, we are... can I ask a question? Yeah, for sure. I... There were uh, people from GMO and other universities, professional translators, we do use this like a cognitive unit. Uh, have you had such well, we do not uh, study phonetics. Um, we don't have it in our program of education, but it is interesting within the theory of uh, translation. Uh, are there any questions? Well, I know Algerian culture a bit, but uh, I would like to know her opinion about uh, the dialect trans uh, creation works Miss Laila Bilapti. I don't think she has understood. Creation between the world languages and dialects, uh, especially with regard of Amazigh uh, and Kabylia versions of uh, Algerian and um, the North Arabic dialects and languages. What about transcreation between, uh, in this case, please? Yes, transcreation can happen between dialects and languages because it is intralingual and interlingual trans translation. So it can happen between dialects and between Arabic standard dialects as well. 
we've got the embassy and we've got also Arabic. But for example, in the case of Algeria, we speak so many languages and dialects. We've got the standard Arabic and we've got the Algerian dialect. And also we've got Amazir and so many other dialects, like in Tuareg, like in so uh, yeah. many. So uh, yeah. do you speak Amazir, uh, the dialect of um, Arabic language or it is the just Berberian language regional? What do you think of this difference? Like a native person. The native dialect of Kabylie people, it's called Amazir, but in fact, there are not just one dialect, there are about 17 dialects in North Africa, in Kabylie's tribes. And also we've got the section of Arabs where they speak the Algerian dialect. And we've got the standard Arabic where we use it at school. And transcreation can happen between all of that. When you make advertisement, we try to translate it or transcreate it in Amazigh if the Kabylie people are targeted and in Algerian dialects if the whole Algeria is, tar is targeted because the whole country can understand this language, it's widely spoken. And we can also speak French and a little bit of Spanish and English. Thank you. Окей, thank you very much, Лалия. Итак, я хотела бы всех в свою очередь of today's conference um, of yesterday and today, a new dimension of and developing these uh, spheres uh, uh, have a lot we meet you again in Yes, and we would be glad to see everyone. Are there any questions to me or to other? If you do not have any questions, so please um, thank. So I thank you all for your talks, and I wish you well. Your research, your professional. I wish you professional success and I hope for the cooperation. Thank you very much, uh, dear colleagues. At uh, 15, there will be a plenary session which will be uh, transmitted to the YouTube channel if you want to. Um, Listen in English, you can um, choose the version. There will be no Zoom link, but the YouTube link. So thank you. Thank you for your attention. See you soon. Goodbye.